Hey guys, chapter 22 of Genesis today. And I want to say that this is such a huge chapter in the Bible. This chapter alone is the pivotal point of the foreshadowing to Jesus on the cross. And it's also a huge story of faith and obedience and hearing God's voice that it really is one that challenges me as a Christian. Um, but before we get into it, you have to remember the back history of Abraham and God's relationship. Abraham talked to God like as face to face. God came down, he ate with him. And so God, what I'm trying to say is Abraham knew God's voice loud and clear. So if you go into this chapter, um, you have to understand that Abraham clearly knew that this was the voice of God. He wasn't in a question mark was, was, did God tell me to do this or get, he knew that God had spoken what he had spoken. And that is so important because, um, to first to God, ask somebody for this magnitude to do something like this, you have to know that it's the Lord. And I love that Abraham is so obedient. You know, he just really challenges us to say, how big is our obedience to the Lord? And with that said, let's read Genesis 22, 1. It says, now it came to pass after these things. What are these things? I remember Abraham waited 25 years for his son Isaac to be born. And all that he had already transpired and went through, he finally, in 100 years, got the promised son that, that God had been telling him about. This is the son that, you know, all the nations of the world are going to be blessed. This is the one that's going to have innumerable, innumerable descendants. And finally, he has arrived. But now... Abraham is going to be put to the test on his love for the Lord and his obedience. And so let's go. Genesis 22, 2. And he said, God, oh, so Abraham, God says, Abraham. And Abraham says, here I am. <laughs> Abraham knew the voice of the Lord. This was not a question if it was the Lord in his life. Like I said, he knew God's voice. And God says, Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I shall tell you. Did you hear that? He's waited 25 years for this promise to be fulfilled. And sometime after, we don't know, I mean, I haven't studied how long it was and how old Isaac was, but the Lord says, now take him and go offer him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I tell you. Now, right then and there, this challenges me more than anything because I'm like, you know, I don't have that kind of obedience. I just, I mean, you have to know that it's the Lord. And so, but Abraham, what was Abraham thinking? Well, we get a little glimpse of what Abraham was thinking in Hebrews. So here God had done a miracle even allowing um, Abraham to have a son and Sarah who was past it was a miracle child but now God's asking him to, to sacrifice him it's pretty intense guys I think that's I don't know I, I think this is one of the most intense testings of ever of all times and I'm sorry I had it marked but now I'm trying to find Hebrews here um, but listen listen to Abraham he's accounted in Abraham in the hall of faith this is what it says and by faith, this is verse 17, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, whom he had received the promise, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, Isaac, your, sh your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he also received in him, a figurative sense but what this is like he said that he got Abraham concluding in himself that God was able to raise him up even from the dead God had made all these promises in fact um, I think there's like 10 times already God had said this is the covenant I'm doing Abraham I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this and then Abraham gets put to the test this is crazy and not only this it says so go to the land of Moriah and 
what is so significant and what you guys need to understand about the Old Testament with the leaders that God had, the prophets and people, he used them as a symbolic um, kind of like a, a live representation of what he was going to do. That's why when Moses struck the, the rock, when God said, speak to the rock, he ruined the symbolism that God was trying to show the people. He wanted to use Moses' life as a sim, sim, symbolism of what he was going to do. Whereas you hit the rock once, Jesus died on the cross. Now all you have to do is speak to God and you know you will have that living water. Where Moses hit it again and God's like, you just misrepresented me and what I'm doing. Well, Abraham, it's interesting here because it says your only son, Isaac, in Genesis 22 too. See, Abraham wasn't supposed to have any other children. That wasn't the plan. He was supposed to be the representation of what God was doing, having his only begotten son. We learn that in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his what? His only begotten son. That whosoever should believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So this is a symbolism of what is to come. So, and I'm thinking, you know, God's probably going, well, let's see if a human would do what I'm going to do to have redemption possible for humankind. So Abraham, in verse 3, rose up early in the morning. He saddled his donkey and took the two young men with him and, uh, and Isaac, his son. He split the wood for the burnt offering and rose and went to the place which God had told him. And on the third day, interesting, third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And he said to the people, hey, stay here. Uh, the lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. And so Abraham did exactly what God had said. Now the interesting thing, you guys, this land of Moriah is the same land that um, Abraham, uh, the mountain, it's the same place that Solomon, you know, David actually, um, the Lord came to, David built a threshing floor and Solomon built the temple in the same place. And this is the same place, the same mountain, the same area that Jesus uh, was crucified. Jesus was crucified on Calvary, the Golgotha, was a part of this whole the mountain of Moriah. So the foreshadowing here is even that Jesus is going to be crucified. Jesus is going to carry his cross up the Via Della Rosa, the, the place of suffering, to Golgotha, Calvary. And this is all in the same area. So think of that. This is what, 4,000 years before Christ did this? Is that how long it was? I don't know. Some like thousand years. I don't know how many years. But many years before Christ, Abraham is being tested on the same place where eventually Jesus um, is going to die not you know I don't know exactly the same place but we know Jesus died on the Mount Calvary I don't know exactly where Abraham was on this mountain I mean God only knows but anyway so Abraham goes and he took the burnt offering and he laid it on the son it on Isaac's son is an interesting because Isaac carried that wood up and you know we talk about the Lord carrying his cross and um, having to have um, a man step in for him to actually carry the rest of the way. If they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, and they compelled him to bear the cross of the Lord. Um, so, this is an amazing thing. So, then Isaac spoke and said, Father, and he said, here I am, my son. He said, look, we have the fire and the wood but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? And, you know, he's, he's perceptive here. He's like, wait a second, what's going on? And Abraham says this very key point. He says, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So the two went. And so the place that this is called is Jehovah Jireh, the, the Lord will provide. Um, and that's what we see. We see that God actually provided himself the sacrifice. And so Abraham went through the exact steps that the Lord wanted him to go through. And the testing, and they're walking up. They put the wood on Isaac, and he goes up to that hill. But remember, Jesus 
he, God, being God, walked up that hill and he was sacrificed. Now, Abraham does all this and he even binds Isaac and lays him on the altar. He builds his altar, puts a wood on, put Isaac. And I just think of Isaac just being humble and just being like, doesn't say he resisted, doesn't say anything. He just says that he, like, he just did it. And Jesus too, you know, he was humbled to the, you know, to go to death. And it's, it's just amazing. And so Abraham stretches out his hand to slay the son and the angel of the Lord called him and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, so here I am. <laughs> you know, Abraham's like, here I am again. Yes. <laughs> and God says, don't lay your hand on the ladder. Do anything to him. For I know that you fear God since you have not withhold your son, your only son from me. And I think about, excuse me, I think about how God is watching Abraham do this and understanding that he is going to do that. He himself is going to die on that cross. And so it was called um, Jehovah Jireh that the Lord will provide. And in the mount, the Lord, it shall be provided. And that is just such an intense moment and could you just see Abraham hear his thoughts where he God must going to be raising him from the dead I don't know I'm sure he didn't understand but he didn't question he followed through what God had told him and the Lord said no 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 so they found a ram that the Lord had and they sacrificed but what an interesting um foreshadowing of that redemption and we know that Jesus went to the cross he died a horrible death but then, you know, three days later, he rose again. And so praise be the Lord that the Lord will provide. And the Lord provides for us that. That's the whole thing about the gospel, you guys. That's the intensity of it, that God provided himself that sacrifice for our sins so that we could just enter in uh, if we believe and we receive and we just remain with him, that we are his children, you know, and that he loves us. And so he did all this for us. And then um, God, it's interesting that then the angel of the Lord told him, he says, this is 11th time that I'm trying to count. I think it's 11th time says on verse 16, by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and not withheld your son, your only son blessings. I will bless you. Multiply. I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, as the sand on the seashore, your descendants will possess the gates of their enemies. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. And so um, it's interesting because he obeyed the voice of God. And like I said, this is just such a challenging uh, scripture, even though it's a beautiful scripture, the foreshadowing. You know, I think of ourselves as like, how obedient are we to the Lord? You know, honestly, in our day, I, you know, it's just like, wow. But how important it is to hear the voice of the Lord and to know that the Lord is talking to you. So it's important that we really get to know the Lord and his voice. And, um, you know, not for just situations like this, just to just to commune with the Lord and just to talk with the Lord. Because that's really what life is about, is about getting to know who our God is and to know Jesus. Um, and so anyway, and then so it says... The young man returned with Abraham. It's interesting. Isaac is not even mentioned here. And Pastor Chuck mentions that maybe that's because, um, you know, maybe a sign of the rapture here. You know, some people think that. But what I find is really fun is that the next part, God gives us a little, little glimmer of Isaac is going to have a wife. And so it talks about that Milka had born children to her, the brother neighbor. And it goes all the way to Bethuel because Bethuel begot Rebecca. And then it goes on. And I just love that because it's kind of like all this craziness. And then time has come to pass. And there's been born a wife for Isaac. But he doesn't know it yet. And he's got to wait because I think he's 40 years old when he actually gets to be married. And so for any of you single people, just hold on there, you know. Um, we have a glimmer that the girl is born, you know, too, and they're going to unite, you know, in the coming chapters. But all that to say is that God has our journey and our plan, um, and he promises to unfold it. We're just to walk in them, as he says. 
And you know what? Let's all just challenge ourselves to hear, to get to closer to the Lord's voice so that we can just be attuned to Him and thank Him for the cross. Thank Him that He is a provider of all things and that He loved us so much that uh, He gave us His only begotten Son. So anyway, I hope this encouraged your heart today, but that's Genesis 22. Guys, go over it uh, yourselves, maybe more slowly, because it's just a lot to do at this time. So anyway, God bless you guys, and we'll see you again for the next chapter. All right, bye.